Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Trading Secrets. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. For those of you who do not know, my name is Ali. I have over 20 years experience teaching accounting, economics, business and law. Through this channel, I'll be providing some stock analysis and a quick update on the million dollar challenge. If anybody's not aware of this, this is a journey of an investment of $1,000 to a return of $1 million over a period of three years using a strategy called compound return investing. So the objective is try to get 201 trades, each with an average return of 3.5%. It's not 201 consecutive trades, we do take into account losses. So for further details about how to join us for less than $9 a month, information is available in the description below. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a review of the recent CEO space chat hosted by uh, Roger Hamilton. I'm also going to be looking at some important points shared by John Burda in the recent space chat, as uh, well as some uh, critical questions that were asked. Before we make a start, let's have a quick look at what's happening in the market. So a uh, headline here from Wall Street G Journal in terms of US stocks. These did gain on Friday after data on the US service sector showed its strongest activity since the summer. So there was signs of uh, economic resilience and this outweighed concerns about inflation. However, however, the problem of inflation is not going away. It's not been dealt with, but uh, we had a great day on Friday. So if we have a look at the heat map again. Uh, apart from consumer defensive uh, sector, almost all areas uh, experience green, uh, so long that may this continue. So before we make a start, I'd like to give a shout out here to Tony from Market Move, who's just posted with regards to Fidelity. So in the uh, post, it states here Fidelity is showing a cost basis of $2.99 and an acquired date of uh, 29th of this, uh, December 2022 that's for the short term obviously we all know that this is incorrect this should be long term the cost basis was actually $1.40 averaged over multiple trades between the 7th of October 2021 and 15th of March 2022 so it would be um, welcome from Fidelity to explain uh, their reasoning behind this and uh, certainly in terms of uh, these cost basing uh, shared by some of the brokers and dealers uh, we don't know what's going on but there is something uh, out there happening so uh, we do need some answers so uh, before we make a start let's have a quick reminder in terms of our action plan for March 2023 so uh, one of the key changes I've made here in terms of um, FINRA, uh, we all know that FINRA are responsible for the U3 halt. We also know that FINRA are the ones that um, uh, obviously have a, we have the, the key complaints with with regard to uh, the whole situation. So uh, all seven days uh, will now include complaints to FINRA. So not only it will, will it be a complaint, and uh, it should be a complaint if you haven't had a complaint, if you've already made a complaint, you can follow up your complaint. So uh, this is the new schedule, uh, and hopefully we can continue this for the month uh, of March. So if you haven't seen the CEO Roundtable Wall Street Forward video live shared by Roger Hamilton, go ahead and do that on Roger's uh, YouTube channel. And uh, the other shout out I'd like to give is also to Busy Brands who hosted this live interview with John Berda. So let's get straight in there. And uh, what I've done on the screen is um, summarized uh, both the Roundtable chat with Roger Hamilton as well as the space chat with John Berda. But obviously John Berda was also uh, involved in the Roger Hamilton live video. So uh, the focus here is primarily for MMTLP. So uh, these are the 15 key points that I've summarized in terms of uh, both uh, shows. So number one, first of all, uh, again, this is my interpretation. So please go ahead and listen to the chat and also listen to the video for your own interpretations. But these are the points I've picked up. So number one, uh, Nextbridge still does not know who its shareholders are. So uh, uh, in terms of uh, is this legally allowed to happen? So John Burda said he wasn't sure, he's not an attorney, uh, but the SEC and FINRA, we certainly need clarification for this. So for example, if Nextbridge Hydrocarbons need to uh, make some decisions, if they require input from their shareholders, uh, currently they are not able to do that. So um, uh, how long has this go is this going to continue? because certainly it's going to create problems for Nextbridge. So number two, John Berta also confirmed he's in close communication with Wes uh, and they are pursuing a number of options. So uh, again, um, it's not a case of um, they're not doing anything. So behind the scenes, uh, there's a, a huge amount going on. Uh, obviously there is a cost involved, especially with regard to 
of the legal side of things, but uh, they are not giving up. So number three, uh, with regard to MMTLP shareholders, uh, obviously John Bird has acknowledged that we are loud, vocal, diligent, and uh, everybody, uh, special thanks to everybody who's been contacting the media, contacting Congress. Uh, this is something that is very, very positive. It's necessary because uh, SEC, FINRA, market makers, bro uh, brokers and dealers so far are not giving away nothing and not sharing anything and not budging. And uh, as far as they're concerned, uh, it looks like if they don't need to do anything or are not forced to do anything, they're not going to do anything. So the pressure needs to be uh, consistent. Uh, number four, uh, class action or lawsuits are still an option. So obviously, uh, an expensive option is more of a, a long-term option, but uh, nothing is being ruled out. Uh, number five, meetings with investor sleuths have uncovered mind-blowing information. So the good news here is obviously we're not in 2008 anymore. We're in 2023. So investors are intelligent. Investors can carry out research. Investors can carry out due diligence. And this has uncovered some outstanding information that has been shared with John Birder directly. Uh, so I think this is the key quote for me, number six, and John Birder said, did say, I'm very hopeful because I know what is happening. He's not able to share everything, uh, but he is, he is in touch with people in Congress and he's not able to share who they are, uh, but it, this is a, a very, very positive statement. So if we go on to number seven here, uh, with regard to uh, the theme of Congress, uh, he's also stated here, everybody in Congress knows about this. They are talking about this. Uh, and the reason why Congress is important is because Congress have the power uh, to subpoena the SEC. They are also responsible for overseeing the SEC. And uh, if we do get to that stage, then the SEC will have to become accountable. Uh, number eight, the MMTLP community needs to keep up the pressure on Congress. This eventually could lead to a much, much uh, better breakthrough because uh, it will not involve the legal costs. So that is our um, key avenue here that is could, could give us great success. Uh, number nine, John Bird says uh, he knows that we are being heard. So we are definitely being heard. So people in Congress, I think the, the, the investors have been getting responses, have been getting letters uh, and we are being heard. So it's not a case of nobody's uh, listening. They are listening. We just need to get that breakthrough. Uh, number 10, with regard to the share Intel data, this is likely to include data from the DTCC and also AST. However, it may not be made public. We know Wes is uh, looking into this. So the company may be given this information if they are successful. And this could really be uh, opening up Pandora's box and could potentially expose uh, some of the authorities. So uh, we have to stay tuned for that. Number 11, 100% uh, confidence evidence is there. We know the evidence is there, uh, but the evidence is not being shared. So two options, one is litigation, second option is Congress. Uh, and currently John Bird has stated they are pursuing both. So all options are on the table. Uh, number 12, in John Bird's opinion, obviously uh, he's not um, a key executive uh, and insider of Next Richard Rob Carbings, but in his opinion, it is not going public. So people are saying it's already public, those people are obviously misguided and they are spreading food. Uh, Next Bridge Hydrocarbons is private and it is not going public. Uh, number 13, the gas value is also very significant and a major play with production capability would be a best fit uh, to buy the assets. I think that we were talking about 12 potential buyers. Uh, so the assets are still there. Uh, the drilling has been complied with and um, obviously no obligations with regard to the lease are going to be missed, certainly for the foreseeable future. Number 14, SEC and FINRA are the only ones uh, who can come out and say how it will be fixed. So we don't currently have the power to say this is what we're going to do to fix the situation. It has to come from the SEC. It has to come from FINRA. And if they don't give us a solution, then uh, the other two options, obviously, we know is Congress or litigation. And finally, uh, uh, just at the end, uh, John Birder did say, keep the faith, keep sharing information. We will get there. There's no official timeline. There's no official date because these matters are subjective and it's difficult to predict. But overall, uh, uh, as a community, I think the MMTLB community, in my opinion, is much, much united, 
much more strong uh, compared to other investor communities and uh, certainly we, we are uh, loud and vocal in our voices and long may this continue. I finally like to finish off by giving a quick shout out to our weekly watch list. Uh, two of the stocks that we called out included TRKA. We know that's been uh, doing exceptionally well. Uh, it's extremely volatile, high risk, but obviously when it was called, uh, it's trading le less than 20 cents. I think it's currently broken the 50 cent mark. Uh, so congratulations to everybody who's made exceptional profits in TRKA. Another one that we called out was LHDX in our weekly watch list. We know that that went up in excess of 500% uh, over five days. There has been um, a little bit of a sell-off in, in the last few days of the week. Uh, however, you were still able to get huge returns Monday to Wednesday, well in excess of 100%. Uh, so congratulations to everybody who got into LHDX. And uh, finally, uh, if you'd like to get the next weekly watch list uh, prior to trading on the Monday, you can certainly join us. Details are in the description below. And thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned.